My name is Tiffany Q, and welcome to my ABRSM Grade 5 Theory Lessons series, where I record snippets of my live lessons with my students. Please note that this is not a substitute for a textbook. If you are preparing for the theory exam, I would still recommend having a teacher to guide you through both the coursework and exam paper preparation. Time signatures in music um, are seen at the very beginning of a piece of music and they tell us how many beats are in each bar. So I'm going to go through the regular time signatures first and then briefly talk about irregular time signatures. Um, don't worry too much about that for now, okay? So regular time signatures. So. Here you'll have you'll see all the regular time signatures in music, and we can divide them into two types: so simple time signatures and compound time signatures. So there are a few differences between the two. So the simple time signatures, the top number would be two, three, or four. Okay, so very simple numbers: two, three, or four. And then the compound time signatures, the top number tends to be a little bit bigger, like six, nine, or twelve, or basically a multiple of three. And the simple time signatures, their main beats are very basic note values, like crotchets, minims, and quavers. For the compound time signatures, they are dotted beats, so dotted crotchets, dotted minims, and dotted quavers. In every regular time signature, there are either two beats in a bar, three beats in a bar, or four beats in a bar. So duple triple or quadruple okay same here duple triple or quadruple so even if we take six eight for example and we know that six eight is equal to six quavers technically in a bar six quavers if we take one of these um dotted crotchets we know that it divides into three quavers okay so three plus three is six but we actually don't say that there are six quavers. We don't really say that there are six beats. Okay, there are only two main beats in a bar. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Rather than one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so that's usually that's why we say it's um, two main beats. Okay, and they are also written that way. Usually they're grouped like this one group plus another group. Um. For the compound time signatures, another thing that you can say is that these dotted notes, or all the beats, divide into three, naturally. So that dotted crotchet divides into three quavers, the dotted minimum divides into three crotchets, and the dotted quaver divides into three semi-quavers. Okay, so if you study them, you'll see that there's a real pattern going on. The number six will mean two beats in a bar, number nine means three beats in a bar, and the number twelve would mean four beats in a bar. Um, and then for the simple time, it's really easy, like two, three, or four beats in a bar. So if we have four, two, it means there are four minims in a bar. If we have nine, four, it's nine dotted minims in a bar. We don't say it's nine crotchets, okay? That's incorrect because technically, you know, there are not nine beats in a bar, okay? So the other way of really describing these time signatures, um, so the step one, it's either simple or compound. And then step two, it's duple, triple, or quadruple. For example, if I have six four, that is a compound duple time signature. If I have four eight, that's a simple quadruple time signature. Irregular time signatures. They happen when we cannot divide the bars into equal groups of two or three beats. Generally, there's not a lot of rules in how they are grouped, and we'll talk about grouping in more detail later on. But for grade five, generally the irregular time signatures are 5 8, 5 4, and then 7 8, and 7 4. Okay? So there's not really like a specific grouping for them. So, like five quavers or five crotchets in a bar, seven quavers, seven crotchets in a bar. So although there are not a specific rules for them, we have to make them make sense in the best way possible. So if we take a look at these two examples, which are actually the same rhythms but written in different ways, we'll see that this here is equal to a dotted crotchet. So the 5-8 kind of, you know, it kind of resembles 6-8 or, you know, 4-8 as closest ones. So you can see that it makes sense, sort of 3 plus 2 or 2 quavers plus three quavers, whereas this one's a little bit odd, 
yeah, sticking the four quavers together in one group and having just one on its own, lonely, or kind of dividing to like this. Okay. We'll worry about that a bit more next week. Simple and compound, two of these. This is an interesting way of translating one to the other. So we sort of have to kind of think differently. It's like translating a language to one, okay? So if we're translating like English to French or, you know, English to Chinese, we sort of think of them differently. They have the same meaning, yeah? Like um, a word in French, like un chien, like a dog, is dog in English. So there are different words but they mean the same thing. So if we have one beat in simple time, and that is one crotchet. One beat in the compound time could be one dotted crotchet. And I'm going to use that for sort of my, my um, first example. If I divide a crotchet into two, you will agree that I get nice quavers. But if I divide a dotted crotchet into two, I get this duplet, okay, which we looked at in our tuplets. If I take this crotchet and I divide it into three, you'll probably agree with me that it equals triplets, triplet quavers. But if I divide a dotted crotchet into three, I just get regular quavers. You see where I'm going with this? Um, if I have a crotchet rest, of course, this would be a dotted crotchet rest. Um, I can have this triplet but I have, so this whole thing is equal to um, a crotchet here. And for here, I would just have the same thing without the number three on top. Um, if I have a crotchet here and a quaver, but I want that all in a triplet, then it would be the same thing here without the number three again. 